program, we'll see the cornerstone unveiling ceremony of Dr. Glenn Seaborg, the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ames Laboratory of the Atomic Energy Commission welcomes you to this cornerstone ceremony. As you all know, the Ames Laboratory is a major facility of the Atomic Energy Commission and devotes itself mainly to the basic and pioneering research in the into the nature of matter. In other words, it is concerned with such problems as why do materials possess the properties they do and how can one control conditions so as to obtain better materials that would exhibit properties which we wish them to possess. When scientists learned to release nuclear energy, they made available to mankind a great new source of energy which was bound to greatly influence the course of our civilization. While its early applications were mainly in the field of national defense, and it is these applications which have received the most publicity, I am sure most scientists believe that by far its greatest impact will be in the field of human welfare. Already it is demonstrated that we have available an almost inexhaustible source of power for producing electricity uh, and heat. However, however, I believe in the long term, perhaps the greatest contribution which the discovery of controlled nuclear fission will make to mankind will result from the very powerful tools it has made available to the scientists. These tools have opened up vast areas for research in the fields of agriculture, astronomy, biology, medicine, engineering, and the basic sciences. Investigations in these areas were almost impossible before these new tools became available. The reactor which you will see today is a fitting example of such a tool. This reactor will be one of the most powerful research tools of this sort in the country, and it will be devoted entirely to basic research for the atomic energy in the field of materials. On this occasion, we wish to acknowledge our gratitude to the people who have made it a reality. Representatives of each of these groups are with us today. They include a member of Congress, representatives of the administration of Iowa State University, which operates the laboratory for the commission, members of the Atomic Energy Commission, members of the State Board of Regents, representatives from Burns and Rowe, the architect, uh, AMF Atomics, the reactor engineers, Maxim Construction Company, the contractor, and my fellow scientists. At this time, I am uh, pleased to introduce Dr. James Hilton, president of, the, of Iowa State University, who will introduce a member of Congress and members of the State Board of Regent, Regents. Chairman Siegberg, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is a certainly red letter day for Iowa State, the Atomic Energy Commission, who have cooperated so well in the work of the Ames Laboratory of the Atomic Energy Commission. I have heard on good many occasions in more recent weeks or months that the Atomic Energy Commission controls the weather. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with them today now because we're supposed to have showers at this time. I understand they've arranged to have the showers come a little later in the afternoon. <laughs> I should at this time like to congratulate uh, Dr. Spedding and all of his associates on the outstanding job they've done in the Ames Laboratory. As all of you know, it's one of the leading laboratories in the country. I should also like to thank the me members of the commission, Dr. Seberg and his group, because they have seen fit to provide this wonderful facility for the research program, not only for the Ames Laboratory, but for the work of the whole university. But my job is to introduce some of the people on the platform and I take great pleasure in introducing to this group, really a person who needs no introduction, Congressman Neil Smith, our congressman from this district, who is always very cooperative with us, 
in helping us to handle some of the problems we naturally have uh, with Congress. Neil Smith, we're glad to have you. Now I should like to introduce some members of the Board of Regents who have, of course, a lot to do in making decisions in connection with some of the program of the Ames Lab. First, Mr. Harry Hageman, Chairman of the Board from Waverly. If you'll stand. <laughs> Mrs. Kenneth Evans of Emerson. <laughs> Mr. Robert Valentine from Centerville. Mr. Wilbur C. Mollison from Grinnell, an Iowa State graduate. Mr. John C. Oberhausen of Dubuque. Mr. Stanley Redeker of Boone. Thank you very much, Dr. Spetty. I would now like to introduce Mr. Kenneth Dunbar, manager of the Chicago Operation Office of the Atomic Energy Commission, who will introduce other guests. Thank you, Dr. Spedding. It's indeed a pleasure for me to uh, participate and to introduce most of the members of the commission. There will be one exception that will be introduced later. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Paul W. McDaniel, Director of the Division of Research, Washington Headquarters, Dr. McDaniel. <laughs> I would like next to introduce Dr. Alex R. Van Dyken, the Assistant Director for Chemistry in the Division of Research and Headquarters. Dr. Donald K. Stevenson, Stevens, Assistant Director for Metallurgy and Materials in the Division of Research. <laughs> would like now to introduce uh, Mr. Howard C. Brown, Jr., Executive Assistant to the Chairman of the Commission. <laughs> Mr. Dwight A. Inc., Assistant General Manager of the Commission. Mr. Daniel J. Casey, the director of our Division of Engineering and Construction in the Chicago Operations Office. <laughs> Dr. Barron, Vice President, Nuclear and Process Engineering Division, Burns and Row Incorporated. <laughs> Mr. O. A. Schulze, Vice President, uh, uh, AMF Atomics. Mr. O.L. DeWeese, Manager, Construction Operations, the Maxim Construction Company. Thank you very much. I would now like to introduce Dr. Harley Wilhelm, the Associate Director of the Laboratory. Dr. Wilhelm has been with us since 1942 and played a very vital role in the development of the laboratory. Next, I would like to introduce Dr. Ada Voigt, Chairman of the Reactor Advisory Committee, whose committee devoted much time to the detailed planning of the reactor. <laughs> and finally, I'd like to introduce Dr. Willard McCorkle, Reactor Division Chief, who will be in charge of the reactor. Dr. Borton Smoots, the assistant director, is not on the platform since he is busy elsewhere. But I should acknowledge the great amount of work he and the other members of the laboratory have devoted to making this occasion a success. Now we come to the high point of, th of this occasion. It, it is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. Dr. Seaborg is one of the most eminent scientists in the world today. He was one of the co-discoverers of plutonium, for which he later received the Nobel Prize in 1951. Since then, he has discovered a whole series of elements which did not exist naturally in our world, which, which can be produced by nuclear reactions. 
He has received many honors and has distinguished himself in administration as witnessed by his being chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. Since I will introduce him at his uh, main address in Great Hall at four o'clock, to which you are all invited, I will not dwell further on his accomplishments here, but just say that we are honored that he was able to be with us today and to take part in the ceremony. It is with great personal pleasure that I call upon Dr. Glenn T. Seaboard. Thank you, Frank. Dr. Frank Spedding, Dr. Wilhelm, and President Hilton, Congressman Smith, Mr. Dunbar, members of the Board of Regents of Iowa State University, and ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege for me, in, indeed, on behalf of the Atomic Energy Commission, to be allowed to participate in the unveiling of this uh, cornerstone this afternoon. I think that uh, this uh, reactor that is being dedicated here today is representative of the new partnership between science and the universities and the government. I've had the privilege of uh, watching the growth of the Ames Laboratory since its uh, very inception in February of 1942. The Ames Laboratory uh, performed one of the most important functions during the war in the atomic bomb project in producing uranium, as you know, of the required purity and on the almost impossible time scale that was required at that time. The laboratory carried on important uh, further work during the war and then after the war was uh, continued by the Atomic Energy Commission, making it possible to carry on the basic research in the intervening years. Much important work has been carried on during those years. Perhaps one of the characteristics of the laboratory has been the ability to translate the results of basic research into practical applications. And this is perhaps symbolic of the age in which we live. We live in what many of us characterize as a scientific age, a scientific society. And this laboratory and this reactor is symbolic of that age. Perhaps as never before in the history of mankind, we are dependent upon science and the products of science, uh, not only for our defense, but for our very economic well-being. We are dependent as never before upon education and scientific research in order to have uh, economic progress in our society. As a matter of fact, uh, as it is turning out, uh, the areas in a, of our country now that are prospering are those that have strong educational complexes because of the rapid translation of scientific discovery into practical uh, applications and new industries today. Another important uh, role or concomitant with the important research, I should say, being carried on here is the uh, education of graduate students. The uh, graduate uh, uh, student education and, ba and basic research, I believe, should uh, go together uh, at every possible level, and this university uh, will serve, has served, and will serve with this new facility as an outstanding example of that. I look forward to great things from this reactor and from the uh, Ames Laboratory in the future. It gives me uh, an especial uh, pleasure to congratulate my friend, Dr. Frank Spedding, uh, on this new facility and on his magnificent leadership of this laboratory since its inception. Thank you very much, and now I think I'll uh, go over and uh, do the unveiling, but I believe I'm supposed to jump over this uh, railing in order to do that. Thank you.
This concludes our ceremony. You are invited to tour the reactor at this time and to attend Dr. Seaborg's lecture at 4 p.m. in the Great Hall of Memorial Union. Thank you.